Welcome back to 843 TV. I'm joined by Lizzie Means, Kyle King, and Sky Lex, and we're talking about their trip to China. Um, so, uh, Sky and Kyle, um, I, I imagine some of us who have, I've never been to China have kind of some preconceived notions about how the Chinese people are and the, you know the culture over there. Did this trip change your thoughts about China and the Chinese people? Very. Yeah, it, it changed did. it a lot. Like, um, there were some like rude people there. There were some nice people, and there were some people in the middle. And the traffic there, oh my it goodness. was terrible. Like our bus driver. He honked it like this, because they have a lot of mopeds there and stuff. Sure, they sure. honked at this one guy in the moped, and he was five feet away from us. <laughs> and there was, like, no intention of honking the horn at him. Right. Did it seem crowded? Yes. Yeah. Very crowded. Yes. Yeah. Um, how about you, Ms. Beans? Did it change your perception of China? I really went into it not knowing what to expect. Yeah. And, like they said, the city, I guess I went over thinking Beijing was just going to be a large New York. Right. And I realized it's actually closer to the size of a state. Okay. And so I think our tour guide said that from north to south and east to west both ways it stretches 900 something kilometers. Mm -hmm. And so it was much larger than I expected. Um, and I didn't realize how diverse China was. There were 56 different languages that they speak and so they all speak Chinese to communicate but you could have two people from two different areas who would each have their own dialect they speak in and they wouldn't understand that. Wow. So that was very surprising to me. Absolutely. Um, and and we're, I'm going to touch a little bit more about the, the time spent at the school. Um, we spoke earlier about how they woke up at 7 and, or 6.15 and were um, in school until 10. Um, and. Um, you were able to participate in a physical education class. Can you speak a little bit about uh, some of the activities that you all participated in in the, in the PE class and, and how they emphasize that maybe differently in China than they do here in America? They have a lot of different um, activities in their PE that you can pick from. Well, I don't know if they can pick from it, but okay. we got to pick. <laughs> um, I know they had a soccer class one time, a cheer class one time. And basketball class too. Yeah, huh? basketball class. They had a nunchuck class, which mm -hmm. is really fun. A nunchuck class. Yeah, I they took that. They had rollerblading <laughs> too. Okay. It was, really, oh, yeah. it was a lot of different options you could do. Mm -hmm. But the very first day we had PE, we did jump ropes. Oh yeah. And we, <laughs> the Chinese kids, they were amazing at jump ropes. They could do like a lot of different stuff. It was really? Really cool. Their jump ropes counted like how many jumps yeah. you did. And I think the Chinese did, students did like 900 something jumps and I only did like not even half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and it's, I, I mean, is there an emphasis on, was calisthenics part of it? I mean, were they doing a, any calisthenics in the morning or, or stretching? They, well, there was one day while we were there, they had morning exercise. Okay. They would go on the field, they would do like stretching and stuff, and then they would get in their groups. They have like 13 to 15 different groups, mm -hmm. and they run around the track. Okay. But it's not like a fast run, it's like, um, it's kind of slow, slower than a jog. Mm -hmm. You can fast walk mm -hmm. pretty much. You could fast okay. walk and catch up. But like, they would be on point with each other, 100%. Like, they had this music playing in the background, it had like a beat to it and they could just keep up like left, right, left, right. And when you looked at the other groups, I was just amazed. Like, because they were super close to each other and they didn't stumble over each other's feet because right. how in sync they were. Wow. Um, and we were talking earlier about, um, you know, cell phones and the way they dress and stuff like that. Can you elaborate a little bit about how the students dressed and interacted with each other? Um, well, their uniforms that they had are a lot different than ours. I mean, it was just like these gray sweatpants and like a letterman jacket. Mm -hmm. And they're not allowed to have cell phones because it's a distraction. Sure. And they communicate by like, well, if you sat through one of their classes, none of them talk during class or none of them laugh during class. If they're talking, then it's either like at lunch or walking to your other class or when you're outside, um, like in the before, your P. Mm -hmm. So not social activities, maybe not number one priority at yeah. school for mm -hmm. them. Well, while we were mm -hmm. in our first like classes that we were there, I saw not a single person raise their hand, and it was just like really weird, because like here in America, at our schools, we raise our hands because our teachers want us to raise our hands if we sure. don't understand something. Sure. So, Ms. Means, do you think you'll take any of the uh, the lessons you learned or your experience in China and, and, and translate that into your classroom here? There were certainly mm -hmm. aspects of it that I wanted to bring back 
So like they said, the class size was very different. I would say the average at that school was about 50 to 60 per classroom. And like they said, there were no behavior problems. They were respectful, but it was very teacher directed. And so the teacher would essentially talk for the whole time. And occasionally a student would stand up and give a quick answer and then sit back down, which is very different from my philosophy of education. <laughs> I want a lot more student involvement, a sure. lot more academic conversation taking place. The thing that I admired most was the sense of responsibility and independence that these students possess. Uh, we watched first grade students get in three lines and lead themselves from the second story of the school down out onto the field for their PE lesson. And wow. no teacher leading them, self-directed. And I think just that sense of independence at that young age is really a life skill that our students would benefit from. Absolutely. Well, guys, this is fascinating. I, I want to thank you all very much for sharing your experience with us today. I hope that uh, you enjoyed your time in China and that it um, encourages you for uh, you know um, to explore the world outside of not just Beaufort, but uh, America uh, moving forward. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And stick around for another segment of 843 TV.